How you doing? Big Jim Country Boy here today. And uh, we're going to change the oil on a 2013 Ford Escape all-wheel drive today. And uh, we're going to show you how to do that. The first thing I do is I remove the dipstick from this hole here. Lay it to the side and take the oil fill cap off. And as you know, that's how you can tell what weight oil you need to put in your car. And that's all you should do. Don't deviate from what the manufacturer specifies, 530. And then over here... This is what you'll need. This is a five quart container of Castro GTX part synthetic high mileage oil. Even though the car doesn't have high mileage, I say anything over 50,000 miles, it needs it. And all I ever use is STP oil filters. I've never had a problem. I actually switched from Mobile One to this oil in my old Saturn. And I gained three more miles to the gallon just by switching oil. So how much better is it for you? Here's the old Saturn over here. Um, I should have made a video, but I didn't. We put all new uh, front end under it. New brakes and rotors, new struts, new sway bar links, lower control arm with new control arm bushings and ball joints and the works. Drives like a brand new car and sounds like one when you start it. Thanks to the Castro GTX part synthetic high mileage motor oil and the STP oil filters is all I ever used on it. So anyway, back over here, not required, but I think it's helpful. There's only one glove there, because here's the other one. And you'll need something like a drain pan. These are fairly inexpensive. And then um, a shop towel or an old rag will work, paper towels, whatever you got. You're going to need an oil filter wrench. And this car, you're going to need a 15 millimeter wrench to take the drain plug out. All right, so let's get to it. I'll meet you under the car. Okay, so I put our car up on ramps. We have a stone driveway, which is very uncomfortable to lay on. So we save all those uh, boxes from the big box store. And they make nice little mats to lay on, give you a little cushion. So anyway, under the car here, right here's the front, there's your oil filter that's got to come off, and there's your oil pan, and this is the bolt that comes out, this is your drain plug. I'll try to zoom out, just so you have a video reference if you need it to find it. Over there's the transmission. You don't want to mess with that changing your oil. It does look like it has a strain plug of some kind or something here. But we're over here, right by the oil filter. There's a coolant line. And it runs around. And you can see here, that's your drain plug. So before you take this off, you need to get a pan under it. So we have to put an oil pan under this now. And this is our oil pan. Like I showed you previously. And we're just going to drag that and put it under this bolt drain plug so it falls into the pan. Now I have a gear wrench or a ratchet wrench, but you don't need that. You could use a regular box wrench. That's just where the gloves come into handy. You should warm the car up first, but be careful, it's gonna be hot. The reason you wanna warm the car first is so the oil comes out quicker. You don't have to wait all day for it to drip and drain. I turn it with my fingers and keep pressure in pressure pushing the plug in 
so that it doesn't leak until I feel it's all the way out and then one quick motion one quick motion I just jerk it out of the way and it comes out and shoots pretty far see I missed it first and I bumped the pan to catch it but when we're done with our shop towel we'll clean that off the cardboard it's not in the driveway it's just on the cardboard when these cardboards get dirty we burn them we got a burn pit we burn them in and burn some firewood in there and sit out at night the other thing is is when it's windy it blows it around if you're outside and now that this is starting to drip see it it'll miss the pan if you're not careful you'll have to slide it back but it's common to drip a little bit of oil like that that's another reason we put the cardboard down see the winds blowing it all over that fine stream right there it's splattered okay so this is what the shop towels for now I've done this with only one towel then I've done it with a roll of towels too because I forgot to put the pan under there and pulled the plug out so don't do that we want to clean off all the old oil and inspect your seal if it's ripped or torn or cut that seal it may leak um, I've put form a gasket around them but you should replace it probably A plug is probably cheaper than a tube of form a gasket, but if you got extra stuff around and you can save it and use it over and over, if that gasket's compromised, you can do that, but I wouldn't recommend it. You're just better off putting a new plug on. So we're gonna let this drain for a couple minutes and then we'll be back. Okay, it's been a few minutes. Uh, it's down to like a slow, slow, slow drizzle. You can't really even hardly see it anymore. I push this back in. Uh, wipe that extra drip of oil off. Don't over tighten it, but make it tight. Just a light tap. I didn't hit it hard. Now, we need to take the oil filter off over the pan also. There's the oil filter. So I just need the wrench and I got to get up in here and then you need a wrench like this one that tips like that, the handle bends because you have to get it up in there and I need two hands so my assistant may hold the oil filter or the camera. I'm going to reposition myself over here. They sell oil filter wrenches that are like sockets that are specific to your car. Which uh, wouldn't be a bad idea if you can get one if you're going to continue to do it yourself. It wasn't real tight like some of them are. All you want to do is break it loose with that wrench. Now, we have to be gentle because this is full. The ground is uneven here. I have another pan I should get, but 
we're going to put that under the filter take it off the rest of the way with my hands and again you want to push up on it it's going to start dripping let it drain Stay out from under it. Be careful. It, it will be hot. You want the car warmed up. This is getting cold already. Because it's very cold outside today. And then you're going to turn it over. Pour it into the pan. Now, what I do is I take the new one out of the box. Then I have the box set in here nearby. I put it up right in the box. Close this up now. And that just goes in your garbage can, the trash can. So I need the new filter okay you always want to make sure that's where the oil filter came from you want to make sure that this is metal here there's no rubber on there the dirty oil on there is okay that's going to lubricate the new filter gasket going on and on your old filter You always want to make sure that the gasket is on here still and didn't stick to the engine. And don't assume because there's one here that there's not another one stuck up on the engine because if the last guy screwed it up and put two on there, if you ever get a filter that's really tight, sometimes that's what's from. They got two of them in there to tighten the shit out of it so it would stop leaking. And then this goes up there. What I like to do is I'll take my finger and dip it in the drain oil and then rub it on the seal so there's a little film of oil on here now just so the gasket don't bind up and get distorted maybe. Now, I don't ever use the oil filter wrench putting them on unless I have a problem. If you're a little weaker, you might need it. If I had a cap, I would put the cap socket filter wrench. I'd put it on without a ratchet and just use that for a little more leverage. I usually just tighten the crap out of it with a clean rag like that. And then we're going to expect, inspect it and make sure there's no leaks after we fill it and we run it. Just to double check. And there's the new filter. One trick some people do in some shops is they'll put the date and the mileage of the car's mileage today, what the miles of the car are on the odometer today and today's date. So if you lose track, you can always crawl under the car See how many miles was on it when you did the oil and compare it to your mileage now and see if it's due. But most owner's manuals in the glove box, if you look, there's a thing in the back where you can write it down for your records. Okay, I didn't put it in the list of things you need, but this car it should have a funnel. Make it a lot easier so you don't spill oil in there. That one's actually has a red stem that screws on the bottom for transmission filling and it was only like a dollar fifty at Walmart take your dipstick And clean all the old oil off nice with your towel. 
And everybody always wonders how you get that open. They put that on there for a safety seal. Your dipstick. And you pop it. And then you can take your finger and get it through there. I don't have nails. If you got nails, you could probably pop that with your fingernail. Don't push it in the bottle. You don't want that in your motor. Tear it off and take it away. Hold the bottle sideways and pour it slowly. Don't get in a rush and overfill the fill funnel. The funnel fills up, it's liable to back up in the valve cover there, the cam cover, and spill over the engine because there's not a tight seal, it's gravity going in. Now the manufacturer says this takes four and a half quarts of oil. We're gonna put all five in. This way, if it does use oil, it ain't going to go low. And frankly, I need this container to put the old oil in. As you're going to see. If you don't have a funnel, you can use a plastic container, you find the right thing, like a milk jug or something sometimes, and cut it down with a, with a knife and make one or a, a water bottle or a soda bottle work good. Two liter soda bottles I've been using for years. Cut the bottom of it out, put the open part in, just make sure there's no soda or nothing left in it. That sugar's no good for your oil or your motor. Now don't throw this away. We're going to put this to the side here. Where's the other funnel? Here's a funnel I made out of an old washer fluid bottle. And I keep the cap to put on to keep the oil that's left in there from running all over the place in the shed. And you can put this right here. Like that. And then we take this here very carefully. You should have for the assistant hold that funnel and steady it. made a mess so we need to clean that up I'll get the shovel and I'll dig that dirt up and I'll put it in a plastic bag in the garbage send it to the trash incineration plant so just let that sit and drain for a few minutes let go now back over here You want to put your oil cap back on some cars if you don't have that it'll throw oil out all over the place that's just what from condensation or the ring Oil didn't even all drain down into the motor yet. Unless we got to add more. 
Because that's not full for my liking. Okay. We're in the car here now. And this is one of those cars that tells you when your oil needs to be done and checks your oil life. And the way you clear that is you turn the key on to the first notch and they see the stuff lighting up. You press down the gas and the brake and you hold them for three seconds and it should come on the screen and reset it for us. Maybe you gotta turn the key to the second notch. To the on position. See, it says oil change Sync required. Sync has connected your phone and is reminding you that 911 assist is set to off. Anyway, you hold down the gas and the brake now for three seconds and see if that oil life resets on there. See, service oil reset in progress. And I did that by having the key on and holding down the gas and the brake. Now I'm gonna release it. It's doing something. Let's do it again. It says this is in progress. I don't know what that means. Turn the key off maybe while it's waiting. We gotta start it up to fill up that oil filter. Let it run for a few seconds. My assistant's gonna look under the car, make sure there's no oil running, splaying, dripping, or anything like that. All good down there, sir? Yep. Sync so. has connected your phone and is reminding you that 911 assist is set to off. Anyway, uh, you can see it's fairly cold right there, the temperature. We don't have any leaks. We know we got at least enough oil in there to run it safely. So we're going to give it a minute to warm up fill that filter good and it also the oil will run back down into the pan so we can check the level better but uh we have it on the ramps we have to take it off the ramps to finalize the check you want it parked on a level flat surface or you're going to get a high or low reading because it's not parked in a level area so we're going to shut this off now please say a command go away is that command count all right, we're gonna put the key back on again. Try saying a device name like phone, climate, or USB. Asking what can I say will always bring up a list of active commands for sync support. Call one. So we didn't clear the oil setting yet. So we're gonna hold down the gas and the brake again. And I think it might take 30 seconds. So I'm just holding down the gas and the brake waiting to see if that screen changes. Service oil reset complete. Okay, so now we did it. So now, we're going to start the car, and very gently we're going to ease back off the ramps. Don't go too fast because your front end can bounce your suspension and catch that plastic bumper cover on the ramps and mess it up or rip it off. That's the stupidest thing I ever seen. 
this car tells you that the hood's open. Did you see that? Like you're not going to notice that while you're driving. It has to tell you in the dash that the hood's open. I think if you don't notice that your hood's up driving, you got bigger problems than what that thing can help you with. Five or ten minutes for that oil to drain down so we can check it to see if it's full and then I'll cut you back in. Let's check this oil now. It's been sitting a few minutes. I'm looking at this. I don't know how that shows up on that camera. And spinning this to get an accurate reading on both sides. That's only full to here. The edge of my finger is. So I'm saying that that's coming up three fourths of a quart low yet. So what I'm going to do is I have some more oil. I'm going to add another quart. So I got another bottle of the same stuff. I use it to add if I need to ever add if it lose, uses a little. Plus my car takes six. So I always need a bottle plus another quart and it's just cheaper to buy a five quart bottle at a time. We need to get her down to this two quart mark, I believe. And like I said, if it's a little over full, that's no problem. It's not gonna hurt nothing. And I don't mind, because I don't think my wife's ever checked the oil on anything in her life. And then I do is I just got it this double bag with Walmart sacks. And I tie this and then I bungee cord it in the trunk of my car somewhere so it can't fall over. So we're going to give that a minute to drain down good, put the funnel away, and then I'll cut you back in. Okay, so I checked the oil again. I'll try to get where you can see this maybe. I guess you can see the hole in the dipstick here. That's the full line. It's right about in there. So I'm gonna go with six quarts of oil when I change this, just like my car. I know if you go to a lube shop and stuff, they always leave it a quart low like that too. And I don't like it that way. So uh, this has been Jim, Big Jim Country Boy changing the oil in a 2013 Ford Escape all-wheel drive. So I hope this helps you out. In the future, we're gonna change this battery. And the way you do that is you take this out. And then this panel here slides up and you slide the battery out. There's some other YouTube videos where they tear all this cow out under the hood and take the wiper arms and undo the master cylinder here and all this other stuff. But uh, the proper way is to take this out, the air cleaner box, and slide the battery out. And we'll show you that in another video. This battery's getting a little flaky once in a while, so I'm going to have to put one in. Until next time, subscribe, like, and share us on any social media you might use, like Facebook, if you could. We'd greatly appreciate it. And we do have a Patreon account if you'd like to donate. Thanks. See you next time. Check out the rest of our great videos.